listening to that is the NZTA's Chief Executive, Fergus Gammy, and he joins me now live. Mr Gammy, um, you have said, NZTA has said, that the Dargaville garage failed William Ball, who was the man who died in the accident. But reading all the facts, I'm just wondering, is NZTA as much to blame for his death as well? So, Lisa, firstly, listening to um, Mr Wilson there, I'm very disappointed in his comments. Uh, and I just want to quickly, publicly again, express my condolences to the family of Mr Ball. I've visited the family and, look, apologise for the transport agency's part in this sad event. The family should be able to rely on the inspection of the vehicle that uh, their brother had been travelling in. Dargaville Diesel was responsible for that. Uh, they did not check the proper vehicle properly. They did fail. We do have clear evidence that their inspection process is not uh, adequate, and uh, and we've and for that reason we suspended their their ability to issue warrants. But there are catastrophic failures in, in NZTA system as well, aren't there? Um, so how long did you know this garage wasn't up to scratch? So this. Uh, Firstly, I want to say, and I have said, that yes, we, the, we need to do better there and the transport agency should have done better. This was, was not uh, good practice and for this reason we've actually initiated a complete change in the way we're doing regulation and we brought in Meredith Connell to... OK, we'll get that. to that shortly. We'll get to that shortly, Mr Gammy, but I'd appreciate it if you could address the question at hand. How long have you known that this garage was not up to scratch? So this uh, Dargaville Diesel has been issuing warrants since 2010. Over that time, the Transport Agency has inspected them or made education visits around 15 times and sought to work with them, which is a, an approach uh, which was too much focused on education. In 20, 2017, we became aware that there were specific issues being identified and we did visit them uh, in November, uh, or the, sorry, the end of the year, uh, in an, unex an unscheduled visit. And in, at, in that visit, we, we identified that actually they weren't issuing warrants correctly, that they weren't, there were things that they weren't doing, such as they, our people did observe them uh, issuing a warrant without checking the seatbelts. So That's that was when we became clearly aware OK, and that's that not the full story. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr Gammy, but that's not the full story. Based on your own statement, from 2011, NZTA found problems with compliance at this garage. And the most serious incident, as you have um, identified there, was that you turned up on the premises and found that they weren't properly inspecting vehicles or in including seatbelts. But you've known there's a problem with this since 2011. W why didn't you do anything sooner? Lisa, that's exactly what I did say, that we have known for that long. We should have done something much earlier. And it is a, an approach to regulation which has not been adequate or satisfactory. And so for that reason, we've actually changed our approach. We've, we spent too much time trying to work with Dargaville Diesel instead of actually acting to stop them doing it. So why didn't you do anything sooner? Well, as we've... As we said in our media release and as we said on the 15th of October, we had an approach to regulation which was focused on education, working with people, trying to help them come up to the standard. And we, did, we were not taking a tough enough approach to enforcement. That is the reason. That is what we are now doing. So if this came to our attention now, we would act immediately to suspend their ability to uh, issue warrants. How many other lives do you think may be at risk because of um, inadequate action by NZTA in respect of garages who are, who are acting poorly? So Lisa, on the 15th of October we identified that we had 850 files that we were working through with a, with a uh, 159 high priority ones. We've, we've uh, progressed through those, we're looking to report our progress next week on that, but essentially, as we go we go through these files, we need to we are identifying where there are specific actions that need to be taken. But that's outside of Dargaville Diesel. That's outside of Dargaville Diesel specialists. That's the whole picture, isn't it? You're talking yeah. about right. So Dargaville Diesel specialists, how many vehicles? How many vehicles do you think um, need to be revisited? Oh, in terms of Dargaville Diesel, yeah. Lisa. 
So with Dargaville Diesel, when after we suspended them, uh, we identified there were 1,956, so 1,956 vehicles which had had warrants issued in the previous 12 months. So we wrote to all of the owners of all of those vehicles and uh, identified to them the issue, strongly uh, recommend that they get those vehicles retested, provided them with a voucher to do that. We've followed up with them as well. We've, we've called them from our call centre, and we're continuing. We'll be continuing and, and uh, to recommend that they get their mm. vehicles retested. Okay, so Rodney Wilson has been punished for his part in this. He's lost his ability to um, give warrant of fitnesses. What about what about NZTA? What about uh, the workers that dealt with this? What punishment are they receiving? Are they all still employed? Has anyone lost their job? So Lisa, what we have done is, and as you know from our uh, media release, we've engaged the QC to go through this in detail and to assess exactly what happened, how did it happen, and around accountability. So we've got to, we're going through that process uh, and we'll see where we get to at the end of that. Um, and we, as we said, we'll make that report public. So we need to follow So you're not ruling out people to... losing their jobs? You're not ruling that out? I'm not ruling anything out or ruling anything in. What I'm saying to you is we, we're, we've engaged the QC so we can go to it in full detail. And we'll, we will, once we get that report, then we'll consider that. All right, thank you for joining us this evening. That is Fergus Gammy, who's the chief executive of NZTA. As he mentioned there, they knew since 2011 that there were problems with that garage in Dargaville.